Hi there everyone. Today we're talking about the basic techniques you need to know to move confidently with an ice axe. Hello everyone, Jason here again. In our last video, we talked about how, yes, mountaineers definitely need to know how to use an ice axe, but that backpackers and through hikers sometimes do as well when they hit snow fields on some of the higher trails of the world. And we talked about how different ice axes are designed in different ways, creating strengths and weaknesses for each as you use different techniques. Well, today we're starting our conversation about the techniques themselves. We'll be covering the basic skills that you'll need to know in order to maintain self belay as you move through the snow-covered mountains, hills, and trails. Now, proper use of an ice axe requires both self-belay skills, skills you use to keep you from falling, and self-arrest skills, skills to keep you alive, or at best uninjured, if you do happen to fall. We'll be covering self-arrest in a later video. Today, we're focused on the techniques you will use with purpose as you travel. Foundational to basic snow travel is your ice axe grips. There are many, and we'll introduce a few more later in this video, but we're gonna start with two. Self-belay grip and self-arrest grip. Self-belay grip is more comfortable and allows you to immediately drive the pick into the slope if you need more traction. However, it isn't very secure if you fall. That's where self-arrest grip comes in. It's slightly less comfortable for long periods of time because your hand isn't resting on the ads, and you limit your ability to use the pick while you're still moving but it is in the position that you need for self-arrest, that is, when you jam the pick of your ax into the slope to stop a slide. With self-belay grip, you have to rotate the ax in your hand to put it in the proper grip should you fall, and that's a prime opportunity to drop your ice ax and lose control of your slide. After making the decision you're comfortable with regarding your grip, I use self-belay grip for what it's worth, you can take on uphill travel. We'll start by talking about techniques while walking in balance. First, you wanna keep your ax in your uphill hand. So if you're walking straight up the hill, it doesn't matter which hand you have it in. But if you're traversing at an angle, then put it in the hand that is up slope. Then you walk at a cadence that keeps the ax in the snow until you are in balance. The in balance position means that your downhill leg is straight and your uphill leg is bent with your foot near your ax. From your in-balance position, you move the axe, then your downhill foot, then your uphill foot, again placing it near the axe, returning you to the in-balance position. From here, it's safe to move the axe again. So it's axe, downhill foot, uphill foot, axe, downhill foot, uphill foot, and repeat. Now to keep the axe in your uphill hand, you need to be able to make proper turns as your path switchbacks. All right, so to execute a turn while staying in balance, I'm in my balance cadence as normal. When I move my axe forward, you have both hands on it. I'm going to change its direction to my new direction of travel. I'm going to step wide with my downhill foot. I'm going to step back and change directions with what was my uphill hill foot and is now my downhill foot. I can move my new uphill foot close to my axe. I'm back in balance. Now I'm ready to move my axe and keep going. One more thing to consider as we move uphill is what we should be doing with our feet. There are three basic step types for those who are wearing crampons. The first technique is called the French technique, and it involves trying to get all of your bottom spikes to engage with the surface. In essence, you're rolling your ankle to get the maximum number of bottom spikes to engage. Then there's the German technique or front pointing. Here, you're kicking the front points of your crampons and the toes of your boots into the snow. And finally, there's the American technique, which is basically one foot each using the two previous techniques. And you can alternate which foot is doing what because front pointing can be hard on your calf muscles. But what if you don't have crampons on? Well, then it depends on how hard or soft the snow is. If you're on soft snow, you wanna kick steps in. Basically, you're trying to create a platform for each step that angles slightly into the hillside. So kick the toes downward if you're kicking straight in, or kick the uphill edge of your boot downwards if you're side footing. If you are on hard snow, this is where step cutting comes into play. 
to cut a step, you first want to make sure that you are in your in balance position. Then using the muscles in your shoulder to only raise the axe, you let gravity bring the ads down and cut a step just next to your uphill foot. Then repeat cutting a step just above the step you just cut. Then you're going to use your axe for balance and use a crossover step and then return to your in balance position. Now, what about when you're moving uphill but are feeling uncomfortable because either the angle is too steep or the snow is too hard or maybe both? Then here is where we can introduce a couple of those other grips that we mentioned earlier on, low dagger and mid dagger. Low dagger is basically holding the self belay grip but using the pick instead of the spike at placements that are between your waist and your shoulders. Mid dagger is gripping the shaft just below the head. Both of these grips can be used when using a technique that is akin to a bear crawl and is designed for moving rapidly over steep, but not vertical ground. You're keeping the same cadence as before. Move the ax, move the foot farthest from the ax, move the foot closest to the ax, and then repeat. What goes up must come down though, right? So after you've done all of this uphill, how do you get down safely? If you're in soft snow, whether you're wearing crampons or not, you're gonna be wanting to plunge step. This is done by pointing the toe up and driving the heel into the snow, making a platform that cuts into the hillside. If you're on hard snow, then your technique will vary based on your footwear. If you have crampons, then you can do French technique facing forward. Basically, you're sitting in your quadriceps so that you can engage all of the bottom spikes onto the surface. You keep your ax at the ready. You can also use French technique by sidestepping. You face sideways across the slope. Then while keeping your ax in self belay above you, you move your bottom foot, then your upper foot, then the ax in sequence. Finally, if you're on hard snow and don't have traction on your shoes, then it's step cutting time again. Keep squatted into your balanced position. Then let your arm do the work by raising the ax and letting gravity work by lowering the ax, just like when we're cutting going uphill. Cut two steps below you, then cross over step back into your in balance position. Now, just like you can use low and mid dagger to ascend, you can also use them to descend. But I find that low dagger is the more comfortable of the two and the more secure of the two grips. The difference in descent is the foot position. You want to lower your ax to near your hip, take one step down, take another step down, but keeping your feet at equal elevation, giving yourself a secure platform. You're now in balance to move your ax again. And one last descending technique, and the one that many feel is their favorite part of climbing and hiking on snow, the glissade, which is the French term for an intentional slide. There are three types of glissades, a boot glissade, a boot ax glissade, and the seated glissade. The basic of these techniques is the seated glissade. The first part of this should be pretty intuitive. Sit down, pick your feet up just a bit so they aren't stopping your momentum as you slide down. And then you want to hold your ax in a rest grip and across your chest. Use the spike as a rudder to control your momentum, applying more pressure to slow down. And if you feel you need to stop, jam the pick into the snow by your hip, wheel around onto your chest and lean your body weight over the pick before coming to a halt and kicking in. So not only did you learn to glissade, you just learned your first of four forms of self-arrest. And one final note, with any of these techniques we've discussed, if at any point you need to stop moving for a period of time, you wanna anchor yourself into the slope. To do that, it's a fairly simple sequence. Decide on an anchor point where your ax is gonna be upslope from you so that you'll be standing below the anchor once you have the anchor set. Then you want to grip the head with both hands, drive the spike down into the snow, and if necessary, twist the axe as you drive it so you can make it as deep as possible, ideally all the way to the head. So that's the fundamentals of staying on self belay while traveling over snow with an ice axe. Stick with us next time to get insights into self-arrest techniques. Let us know in the comments section if you have any trips coming up for which you're going to need an ice axe in these techniques. If you want additional information on this video, and every video we produce, along with links to the equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce how-to and educational videos like this one, as well as our short films of our family adventures, and we release something new every week. So if you have suggestions for content you'd like to see, 
you can drop those in the comments section too. See you again soon and keep on getting more out of that big outside.